What is IP spoofing? Well, it basically means faking your identity. We have a hacker with IP 10.10.10.10, we have a server with IP 20.20.20.20, and we have a spoofed victim with IP 30.30.30.30. Well, when the hacker sends a request to the server, normally uh, that request info should contain the from and the to field. For, for from field, it should be 10.10.10.10, the IP of the hacker, and for the to uh, field, it should be 20.20.20.20, the IP of the server. But the hacker is forging the request and it's modifying the from field to contain a different IP, the one of the spoof victim, 30.30.30.30. The server receives the request and sends the reply, but instead of sending it back to the hacker, it sends it to the spoof victim because that's the address it received, 30.30.30.30. The hacker never received the reply. You can think of a, a simple example. Let's say Alan sends a letter to Bob and it says, well, Bob, you're ugly. And instead of filling it from in two field to be from Alan to Bob, it says it's from Cody to Bob. Bob receives the letter and sends back a reply to Cody saying, no, you're ugly. And the data from, for from in two field is from Bob to Cody. Cody receives that reply from Bob, even though he, he never sent an initial letter. To, to Bob. Uh, VPN uses uh, kind of the same principle. For instance, let's say you're accessing uh, a website using a different uh, IP, the one that VPNs provide you. Uh, the, the page, the server that you, uh, where you send the request sees the uh, spoofed IP, let's say, so the one that provides VP, uh, the one that is provided by the VPN, but it's not actually your uh, real one. IP spoofing is used, for instance, in uh, DDoS attacks. Um, the purpose is to mask the real identity. Now, let's simulate IP spoofing. Uh, first of all, I'm going to send from the my attacker machine a normal ping request to our, um, to our target. So, let's say dash four, dash you one to be only one ping request, and target Okay, now we see here that we have the uh, ping request and the ping reply from hacker parrot to target Ubuntu. All good so far. On our target Ubuntu, we can see the two packages, the echo request and the echo reply from hacker parrot to target Ubuntu. All good. Now, let's do the fun part where we are going to spoof our uh, target Ubuntu with a request that should be uh, sent from um, our spoofed Linux Mint machine. Uh, in order to, to do this, I'm going to use hping3. So, sudo hping3. I'm going to send this request to target Ubuntu. It's going to be an ICMP request, and only one. And now we are going to spoof our packet to see that it was sent by spoofed Linux Mint. Okay, now we see this uh, packet here that it looked like it has been sent from spoofed Linux Mint to target Ubuntu. In here, in the Internet Control Message Protocol, there is no response because uh, the server sent the response to the actual spoofed Linux Mint machine, not to Hacker Parrot. On the target machine, we see that we received a ping request from spoofed Linux Mint, even though it was sent from our machine, from Hacker Parrot, but here it appears spoofed Linux Mint, and the reply has been sent to spoofed Linux Mint, not to our initial um, machine, from the attacker machine. Finally, in our Linux Mint machine, in the spoofed one, we saw we see that we received a reply from target Ubuntu, even though there wasn't any request initiated from this machine. Unfortunately, IP spoofing can be hard to detect and quite impossible to prevent. Anyway, there are some measures you can take in order to increase your security. For instance, you can use a firewall. This will allow only authorized traffic. Another thing you can do is use an antivirus because this will provide an extra layer of protection. Also, you can implement packet filtering. 
if uh, you have a larger network, you can use network, network segmentation. Um, the attacker should compromise multiple segments in this uh, situation and it's harder for him. You can also blacklist the IP, some IPs in case it is needed. Uh, your Wi-Fi and your router should be secured. Uh, might not change default credentials and set up a strong uh, hard to guess password. Also, you can keep your software up to, up to date because in this way you will not miss um, any security updates. I hope today's video was useful and you learned something from it. If you enjoy my content, hit the like and subscribe button or leave a comment with what you like and what you don't like. I want to thank you for the time you took to watch my video and see you next time. Bye bye.